co-host is there smiling. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so today is what day? Today is Tuesday. Tuesday, March 5. Huh? Fat Tuesday. Tomorrow's Ash Wednesday already. Okay, so today we'll do the gospel commentary of today's Mass. And we're going to read from St. Mark chapter 10, verses 28 to 31. Hello, Ray. Good evening in your part of the world. <laughs> okay. So the gospel says, Peter began to say to Jesus, we have given up everything and followed you. We have given up everything. Right? The apostles left everything. Brother, sister, mother, father, lands, and everything to follow Jesus. In fact, that's what St. Peter says here. Amen, I say to you, Jesus says to him, there is no one who has given up house or brother or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions, and eternal life in the age to come. But many that are first will be last, and the last will be first. So this is, this is a very <clears throat> kind of ironic uh, uh, reality that Jesus is presenting to us here, right? He's telling us that if we give up everything, everything is going to reward us much more than what we had given up. Okay? He's going to give us not only a mansion in heaven, not only not only uh, riches uh, on this earth, right? On this earth, in this present age, he said. In this present age. But also, and more importantly, the beatific vision that awaits us in heaven eternally. Eternally. This is the message that Lent wants to prepare us to look forward to. See? Lent is a time of penance. Lent is a time of sacrifice. But our Lord is reminding us as we embark on Lent tomorrow that no matter how much sacrifice we, we uh, do, both for reparation for our own sins, which are many, and the sins of other people, our Lord is going to reward us for all of that. That is what the giving up is all about, right? Giving up here doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, we're going to live like hermits from now on and really abandon everything and, uh, and really uh, uh, live in seclusion there in the desert. Some people are called to do that, to that kind of life, right? Some people uh, uh, answer the call of God to that kind of life. But for us, ordinary people in the middle of the world, that's not necessarily what this gospel message <coughs> entails. What this gospel message entails is <coughs> what we were talking about yesterday. <coughs> detachment. Detachment. Right? To be detached from material wealth, material possessions, from the things we have, so that we attach ourselves to God completely, who is our hope. Right? And that happens by way of mortification. When we mortify ourselves, when we deprive ourselves even of sometimes the, the best things in life that we have, the ordinary things we have in life, our tools, our gadgets, our pleasures, our uh, desires, and we offer all of that to God, then God is going to reward us a hundredfold for all of that sacrifice. So what lesson can we learn from this? We have to be generous to God, number one. We have to be generous with our offerings, with our sacrifices, with our mortifications. And God is not going to be outdone in generosity. Right? He is going to be more generous to us, not only in the afterlife, but even here. Even here in this present life, our Lord is going to give us plenty of graces, both spiritual and material graces, that we would need to facilitate our journey to heaven. Okay? 
But what kinds of things can we give up? What kinds of things can we mortify ourselves in this time of Lent? Hey, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to read some excerpts from uh from uh, the children of Fatima. Okay? So that we can pick up some good ideas about how the children of Fatima sacrificed themselves it, to answer our lady's call when our lady told them the church needs plenty of sacrifice, plenty of penance for sinners and I'm counting on you, my little children, to uh, contribute to that effort to sacrifice yourselves. Okay? So we will read what kinds of sacrifices did the children of Fatima uh, offer up to God. Listen here. Some days later, as we were walking along the road with our sheep, right? There were sheep herders, right? I found a piece of rope that had fallen off a cart. I picked it up and just for fun, I tied it around my arm. Hey, who was this speaking? These are from the memoirs of Lucia. Before long, I noticed that the rope was hurting me. Hey? So she tied it around her arm and it was hurting her. And guess what she did? She, what she told the other, her, her cousins, look, this thing hurts. I said to my cousins, we could tie it around our waists and offer this sacrifice to God. Hey? Another story. Another day we were playing, picking little plants off the wall and, and pressing them in our hands to hear them crack. While Jacinta was plucking these plants, she happened to catch hold of some nestles and stung herself. Okay? Stung herself. So instead of complaining and saying, ah, it hurts, you know what she did? She pressed it all the more. She pressed it all the more so that it would really uh, sting her. And all the other children did the same thing in order to offer up that little discomfort, that little sacrifice for sinners. More stories. Jacinta would not miss any opportunity of making sacrifices to obtain the conversion of sinners. When Jacinta would not eat to mortify herself, which may not be a good idea, she didn't eat. Lucia would tell her, Jacinta, come on, now eat. No, I offer this sacrifice for sinners who overeat. <laughs> See? So sin sinners can be gluttons. You know, they overeat. They cannot mortify themselves. Well, Jacinta, in order to make up for the gluttons, she said, well, I will offer this meal for those who overeat. More stories. The little shepherd children, um, uh, where are we now? would offer their own food to the poor, right? They would offer their food to the poor. Uh, one afternoon, the three children got hungry. To remedy that, Francisco climbed up a green oak tree and filled his pockets with long, sweet, and nutty acorns. But Jacinta suggested that they would instead eat acorns from great oaks to make the sacrifice of chewing something very bitter. See? Instead of the sweet ones, they would go after the bitter ones. And so when they eat it, they hit two birds with one stone. They fill their tummies, yet they mortify themselves because the bigger ones are bitter. Okay? So this is like what I'm telling you, right? Eat more of what you don't like and a little less of what you like. Okay, that became their usual sacrifice to eat bitter stuff for the conversion of sinners. Okay? Another story. Jacinta's mother knew well, okay, that the little girl did not like milk. Oh, does that sound familiar? One day, she brought her a cup of milk and nice bunch of grapes. Okay, here, Jacinta, she told her, if you take, if you can't take milk, just leave it there and eat the grapes. So her mom was trying to tempt her. Yeah, to eat the grapes. No, mother, I don't want the grapes. You may take them. Let me have the milk. And without showing the slightest repugnance, she drank it. Her mother was happy, thinking that her daughter's distaste for milk was gone. Then Jacinta told Lucia, I crave for those grapes so much, and it was so hard to drink the milk. But I wanted to offer this sacrifice to God. One morning, Lucia found her with an <coughs> altered countenance and asked if she felt worse. 
Tonight, she replied, I've had many pains and wanted to offer our Lord the sacrifice of not going back to bed. So, I did not sleep at all. Well, those are some of the stories of sacrifices that the children of Fatima offered our Lord for, the, for their own sins and the sins of others. Now, of course, we are not sheep herders. We uh, may be under different circumstances as the three children of Fatima. But what sacrifices can we offer? Right? We have to think now. What sacrifices can we offer in our, in our own environment, in the daily circumstances of our lives, that we can offer to our Lord? Maybe one of the things we can imitate is to eat more of what we don't like and less of what we like. Maybe another sacrifice I could suggest is to put more intensity in our schoolwork, to pay attention more to our schoolwork, and to minimize distractions. Right? If it is so difficult to sit still on that chair and study, well, that's a good mortification. Instead of keeping on standing up and going here, going there, right? Maybe we can concentrate more on our studies. Maybe we can be, uh, we can mortify ourselves by not annoying our siblings, right? And being a little bit more cheerful around the house. Mm. Putting on a smile on your face can be mortifying. Especially if you don't feel like smiling. Especially if you don't feel like being nice to others. Right? Uh, how many times can we attend to the needs of our siblings? Okay? When, when, when we notice that our siblings need something, are we the first ones to go and volunteer and serve and help? Right? Those are the many, many little things. And I know you can think about those things in your own, uh, in your own way. And what I've been suggesting is before Lent even begins, let us already start making a list of those one, two, or three mortifications that we can practice all throughout Lent. And remember, God will never be outdone in generosity. Right? The more generous we are with our sacrifices and offerings to God, the more generous God is going to be with us. Not only in this present life, but more importantly, in heaven. We hope that we receive the ultimate reward of heaven. And that's what we are here on earth for. That's the goal, to work towards heaven. Right? Okay. So, that's it for us, folks. We'll see you tomorrow again. Hopefully, uh, we all start thinking about Lent. Hopefully, we're all... Uh, already immersed in the uh, in the spirit of Lent as early as now, and hopefully it just gets intensified all throughout the forty days of Lent that we are looking forward to. Okay, have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye.